listen, I am not his projections. I am not his accusations. I am not my failures and I am not my sin. I am beautifully accepted in the beloved. We are seated together above in heavenly places. We're in fresh communion with Jesus Christ. And the way that we enjoy the victory of the resurrected throne of God's kingdom is through the precious word of God becoming alive and the word of grace and dwelling in us richly in Colossians 3.16 and building us up in Acts 20.32, fellowshipping with one of the most wonderful, glorious, wonderful persons in all the world, Jesus Christ. I'm a king. I'm reigning. I know it. My future is going to be marvelous. I'm speaking for you as well as I. We will be caused to triumph. And the Lord says, listen. I will let Satan's kingdom remove the things that can be moved in your life. The things that are not a part of my kingdom, I'm going to let trials, testings, and temptations, I will let his kingdom move the things in your life that are movable. Hardship and pain and suffering and trials will do the work. And so the things that happen to you will be for the purpose of removing the things that can be moved. The things that are not kingdom things. The things that do not have their substance in God's kingdom. They will be removed in your life. Oh yes, and you will react and you will resist. And perhaps mentally retaliate. But they must be removed. But when you enter into the value system of eternal scales, when you enter into the kingdom of grace and the kingdom of love and the kingdom of power and the kingdom that has such ability to take man and keep him in the center of God's will, in the perfect will of God's plan, in the purpose of God's provision, when you begin to understand that the kingdom of grace within you cannot be moved, will not be moved, and your chin is up and your shoulders are erect, and you go forward communicating the kingdom language of Jesus Christ and confessing the words of victory, agreeing with God, you'll discover that life indeed is abundant. Listen, there isn't a single thing in the world that has to make me have a relationship that's outside of virtue love. What is virtue love? Virtue love is not mental excellence. Virtue love is spiritual excellence. Virtue love begins with the only important time when my love must be objective toward God. That means my love depends upon God. That's where virtue love begins. Once my love depends upon the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and its objective love, then that love becomes subjective. Then it depends upon the Spirit and the Word of God dwelling in me. And right there comes the theatric activity of God's kingdom. No longer is it in word only, but it is in great demonstration of power. And now, all of a sudden, my love through Jesus Christ within me, through the kingdom of God, is subjective. No matter what people do to me, the love is exactly the same. No matter what they say, we respond through the government of God's kingdom. 
There is no envy, implacability, or bitterness, or resentment, or insecurity, or fear, or jealousy, or reaction, or retaliation, or scapegoat programming. Indeed, Jesus Christ filling us with himself, we have become members actively of his kingdom. And because we have content in our soul, Jesus Christ and his heart and mind are resident in us. And because we have the residency of Jesus Christ now through faith obedience, it is so easy to function in the realm of what is resident within us.